So just her, $500 a month. And you're saying like individual plan through the reserves, 50 bucks. We're spending 10 times that much money. And <laughs> on top of that, I'm Sergeant Marcus Walker. I'm the uh, Air Force Reserve recruiter. I'm located out here in Moore, Oklahoma, which is about 10 minutes south of Oklahoma City. I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but I grew up in El Paso, Texas, just by being an Army brat. Uh, originally entered the Air Force in 2010, uh, came in as security forces, but was able to get a secondary tech school to be a academy instructor. Started out in Dover and Delaware, then transferred out to Pope Air Force Base out there at Fort Bragg and then transferred out to Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Atlanta, Georgia. And then now I'm out here at Tinker Air Force Base as my fourth location. If you want to get in contact with me, uh, I have Facebook, Air Force Reserve, more slash Midwest City. And then for my Instagram, it's Air Force Reserve Oklahoma. And then I have the Twitter page, which is Air Force Reserve Staff Sergeant Marcus Walker. What is the pay like in the reserves? This is the biggest question people want to know. So as a reservist, you're going to look at two different types of pay. You're going to have your drill pay doing your one week in a month, and that's going to vary off your rank from E1 to E4, E5. It depends. Um, at minimum, you're looking at close to 250 for a 16-hour drill weekend. And then as well, the second pay is going to be your active duty pay. So basic training, tech school, um, anytime you're activated on uh, Title 10 orders, uh, your annual tour, um, your seasonal training program, you're going to be receiving active duty pay. And so that can range from, I want to say at minimum 2000 but then as well, you're going to get your basic housing allowance um, while you're on Title 10 orders. Um, you're literally going to get all your active duty pay. So your uh, basic allowance for subsidized, your uh, basic allowance for housing, and then you'll get your base pay. And then if you're married or have dependents, your basic housing allowance is going to be a lot higher than someone who doesn't have any kids. And, and if you were well, separated for more than 30 days, you would get family separation pay as well, wouldn't you? I believe so. That's nice. That's good to know, especially like tech school, like that BMT and tech school time frame. you're making active duty pay that whole time, basically. So yep. is the pay the same for guard and reserves? Just the traditional one weekend a month, uh, aspect of guard and reserves is it the same pay the pay is exactly the same how often do you get paid so if you're working that one weekend a month when does that paycheck come to you probably a week and a half after that drill date so for example this weekend is a drill weekend so may 1st may 2nd you complete your drill you're probably going to get paid that week of what was it may that may 10th week is probably when you're going to receive your drill pay I know you had mentioned in our other interview that we had done, if you guys haven't seen that, you can check it out in the link down below in the description. But does the Air Force Reserves offer health care? Yes. So we have the, it's not mandatory. It is an option. It's called the TRICARE uh, Reserve. So for anyone who's single, no kids, um, you can pay less than $50 and have health insurance. If you're married, kids, family, you're looking close to 225 around that area as far as health insurance for you and your family. Um, so it is an option, it's not mandatory uh, because as well, some of our reservists do work civilian jobs. So and they so got, civilian- Yeah, they get some civilian. good healthcare benefits through their full-time yeah. job. So it's basically which one is going to be more beneficial, go with that one. But always for my single guys or my single individuals, you can't beat 50 bucks for health insurance. Um, yeah, like not even close. But, so the crazy thing, actually, I'm going to follow up on this. This is like a huge reason why I'm like, I'm a big advocate for people that are interested in joining the military. I'm, I'm super for it because the healthcare aspect alone of the military, I know some people will complain that like, you know, the military healthcare, it's not the best. And, but like, to be honest, civilian health care sometimes isn't the best either. So <laughs> it's like either way, but right, my wife right now, because we work, uh, like we just work from home, like for ourselves right now. So like we don't have employer benefits, anything. We don't get none of that. So her health care right now is like $500 a month. 
just just for her because I'm covered through the VA. So just her, $500 a month. And you're saying like individual plan through the reserves, 50 bucks. We're spending 10 times that much money. And <laughs> on top of that, whenever she goes to the doctor, sometimes she still has to pay a copay. Sometimes they'll send her a bill in the mail because our insur- her insurance didn't cover all of it. And it's like, it's such a nightmare. So when you think about going in, you're like, oh, you still have to pay for healthcare, but you're like, yeah, like 50 bucks. And then it's like, boom, it's all covered. Like you don't have to worry about getting a bill for an x-ray or going to the wrong doctor or whatever. Like most of the stuff you have to call, get a referral, they'll get you scheduled and you can go. And well here, especially like with the VA, I don't know how it works for TRICARE, select, or TRICARE reserves, but like with the VA, they have like it set up where a lot of the urgent cares here, you don't need a referral. So like I've been having like shoulder back pain lately and I just go to the urgent care right away and they can look at me, do x-rays, do whatever. And they just, they just send the bill to the VA, but that urgent care is already covered. But it's like having that, like for me, I'm still taken care of by like my military aspect for my healthcare. And I'm like, my experience right now compared to McKenna's is like, she spends so much money, $500 a month. And it's like, so that's a big, like a big selling point. I feel like for the military in general, but even the reserves is doing one weekend a month to save $450 on your healthcare. Like and that 450 can go to something else. Right there. You're getting 250 bucks a month for one weekend, but then you're saving $450 a month. So then it's like, really, you're getting paid like, what? that's like $700 right there. Really? You're saving a ton of money and you're getting paid on top of it to save. So, and then the, Best thing about it is if you don't have any health insurance, when you do apply for the TRICARE Reserve, they have a list of approved primary care physicians within your location that are approved through TRICARE. Um, And then as well, like for me, I'm going through pre-marriage counseling. Um, Our counselor wasn't originally approved through TRICARE. She went through the channels and now she's officially approved. So our pre-marriage counseling is paid for and I don't got to come out of pocket for that. And now all your friends that get married in the area, you can send them to her because now she's approved. <laughs> and then she's going to possibly get more business from it too. So it, it almost benefits her to be approved that through that channel. Exactly. That's awesome. If you're in the reserves, do you qualify for the VA home loan? Yes and no. If I'm correct, you have to complete your initial six years before you're eligible for the VA home loan. That's the only caveat to it. But once you complete that six year contract, it's basically kind of up as well. Okay, so it's not like active duty because once you're on active duty, and I think it, there's a certain time frame, but it's a really short time frame that you have to complete. But that's good to know that like if you served in the reserves, you did your six years, so you get out after the reserves, you'll have earned that benefit through the VA. After serving in the reserves, once you get out or when you're in the process of getting out, can you qualify for VA disability benefits? Yes, as long as you made sure everything was documented while you were in, you should be fine as far as when you do get the fee, uh, go to the Veterans Affair and get your evaluations and all. It's the same thing. Just because we're doing one week in a month, that body is still going to get that wear and tear um, because you're doing the exact same career field as our active duty counterparts. So as long as it, it was documented while you were in and it was related to your work <laughs> in some way. Correct you'll be able to file for for a rating once you're out. How does retirement work in the reserves? Like, do you just do 20 years and then you're just like, boom, I'm punching out after 20. I get my check then like the next month. Or do you have to wait to get that retirement check? Or do you have to do a certain amount of time past 20? So the Air Force adopted the 401k plan. So basically, you will put in to the four or into the blended retirement plan um, even if you don't put in, the military is going to put in 1%, but at max, they're going to match up to 5% of whatever you put in. And so after what you put in for two years, that's your money, but you can do 20 years to be officially retired from the Air Force Reserve, and then you'll have your blended retirement plan to fall back on. As long as you put something in into your blended retirement plan, you, you should set yourself up for success because once you do get out, you can transfer that to whatever the civilian equivalent is uh, to whatever new job you go to. So that way, you know, that money's not just sitting somewhere. You can continuously keep building. it. So you guys don't offer like a pension plan that like once you're like active duty, when, if, when you finish your 20 years, 
you will keep getting paid a percentage of your pay the rest of your life. And then so, with reserves, like, do you get, you don't get paid right after you retire? Do you get it at a certain time when you get like a pension? I've been in the reserve for 11 years, but I've been an active guard reservist for seven years. So to get my active duty retirement, I have to complete 13 more years to get my active duty retirement. Meaning as soon as I'm done, I can pull immediately instead of waiting until I'm 65. Yeah. Or I technically got nine years left. And if I want to go ahead and punch out, I got to wait till I'm 65 to, before I start pulling that money. So. Gotcha. so if you want to start getting paid right when you retire to the rest of your life, you need 20 years active. But if you just did that, that one weekend a month, if you do that for multiple years or 20 years, you're not going to get a paycheck as soon as you hit 20. How does healthcare work after you retire? I know you might not know because you're not retired and that's like <laughs> super, that's not probably something you guys talk a lot about with recruits because that's so far into the future and then only like 15% or so actually retire. So you're looking at like, there's a very small amount of people that you would, if you tried to tell everyone about, but uh, like active duty, if you do 20 years, like your healthcare is covered for the rest of your life. But what about in the reserves? Does it work the same way? Honestly, I wouldn't know. Um, I would have to, I would assume I would be the TRICARE uh, retired plan, but I would have to honestly look into that. Like you said, that's so far down the road. Um, yeah. That's something we really don't discuss with people. By that time, the guys that are close to retirement, they've, they're getting their briefing because they're going through their transitional assistance program. So they're going to get- They're going to have a lot of people that are helping you with that process because- yeah. They're going to make sure they're trying to take care of you once you become a retired veteran at that point. So cool.